from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering AWS reInvent 2018. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services, Intel, and their ecosystem partners. And welcome back, Paul D here at AWS reInvent. John Walls, I'm with Justin Warren. We are live here on theCUBE, continuing our second day of three days of coverage here in Las Vegas. Joined now by Patrick McFadden, who's the Vice President of Developer Relations at Datastax. Patrick, good afternoon to you. Hey guys, thanks for having me. You bet, glad, glad you could be with us here. Um, first off, let's tell us about Datastax a little bit, um, and then I want to ask you a question about hybrid cloud. It just, I've got a chuckle about a comment that Justin just made, but first off, tell us about Datastax. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> hybrid cloud, we could talk about that all day. All right, we, go ahead. We, we only have so much time here. Yeah. So, uh, Datastax, we're a database company. Um, we were formed around Apache Cassandra, the database, but we are really an enterprise database company for those who want to use Apache Cassandra, but we add a lot of things to make it enterprise ready. So things like search, analytics, uh, we have a graph database, but more importantly, some of the harder bits, the, the, the less sexy parts, like security, uh, compliance for different regulatory things. So taking an open source database and really buffing it up and making it for an enterprise, that's what we do. And we have a variety of products we sell around that, but essentially, in a nutshell, that's what we do. What I, yeah. what I was chuckling about, because uh, uh, Justin was saying, we talking about hybrid, and we said, yeah, we've been talking about it a lot over the last two days. He said, well, I've been talking about it for the last ye year. So, I mean, this uh, is, yeah. so this is no secret to you, right? I mean, yeah. like you said, you've been yeah. banging that drum for a while now. Well, so I've been working with the Apache Cassandra project for about eight years now, and that database was built to do hybrid, anything. Yeah. It's main, it was purpose built to work in multiple clouds. It's a massless architecture that works in one data center, two data centers, three or four, so, Years ago, we were talking about this, and this was back when people were still trying to get, you know, they had an on-premise data center in East Coast and West Coast. How do we make that work? Yeah. Now we're talking about, okay, now we have on-premise and now cloud, or how about two clouds, or how many clouds do you have? We, we do not care. You can run it as all those that you want to. We will work across all of them, anywhere, anytime. We're there to cheer you on, help you do it, and be successful. Yeah, well, that is something that we've noticed in the last couple of days here at uh, Amazon reInvent is that Amazon has kind of relaxed its stance a bit about where data can live. Previously, hybrid cloud was not a thing. It was right. no one cloud all the time. Whereas right. for, uh, for most enterprises, I think that wasn't actually a practical reality that they had a lot of data that was living somewhere else. So now it's good that Amazon has opened that up. It's like actually, there is a way that you can do this in multiple different locations and it's perfectly valid to do that. It's now a choice of what should live where and why. So when you have customers who are trying to make this kind of decision, which is quite complicated about where do I put my data? If right. I could put it anywhere, it's like, I'm going to put it in all the places. That's probably not ideal either. So how do you help customers decide when they're, they're architecting their database where the data should live? How, how do, the, how do you yeah. help them decide? Should I have one on each coast? Should I have one on all the coasts? Should I put everything into my phone and my car and my, my robots? Well, there's two parts to it. I mean, the first question we're always going to ask is, what is your cloud strategy? Because everyone has one, or at least they should, and we, want, we, can, we can form ourselves into it. So if they're going to have a certain, like their new applications running in the cloud, legacy applications running on-prem, great, we can help you do that. Okay. Uh, second thing is, is thinking about where we are with applications now, this is 2018, people do not go with latency, and everything is fairly global at this point. Global economy is real, your data needs to be where your customers are, to get around the world, so if you have a website or a mobile application that runs in North America and you have someone in India trying to use it, automatically you get a half a second of delay. Yes. You cannot survive that way. No one's going to use it there. So if you're truly a global company, you need to put your data where your customers are and they're probably everywhere. So we also want to have your data everywhere and we can support that and help you be successful doing it. As someone who lives on the other side of the planet, I can definitely attest to that it is very far away, even if you are traveling at the speed of light. Uh, exactly, and we're, we're ready for a SpaceX, you know, if they put stuff out there, we're ready for it. <laughs> the, the, the space database, I like that idea. Yeah, There's we're going to nice do it. We're not terrestrial, we're galactic, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this is something that you've been doing for a long, long time. As you said, you've been yeah. working on this for a long time. But what are you looking at customers who are doing things today? It's 2018, as you said. What are customers looking for? to Datastax to help them to do today? What, rather than things that they were doing five years ago, what are, what are customers right on the edge doing where they, you help them out? 
Well, all right, so first of all, it's for customers, it's, it's going to be something that's really, we're closer to your customer, of course, but there's also this angle of open source databases. Open source databases are a very hot topic, or any open source infrastructure is a hot topic, and being a, we're a proprietary enterprise company that also supports an open source product, we have to respond in kind, in a lot of ways, to how we can, you know, how we can provide something for someone who's very, you know, like, hey, we're, we only believe in open source. Uh, Great, we can help with that. We, we have a, our data stacks distribution of Apache Cassandra, which is, is a feature compatible with open source Cassandra. Um, just support, there you go. Um, all the way up to our full enterprise product, and then in the open source side, we help with a lot of other things like developer enablement. That's of course my job, so I'm going to be on that. But, yeah. but we, we develop the drivers, we, we give education, because right now developers are the ones, they're the money makers at a lot, every enterprise. Every, every enterprise is going to be a technical, you know, every company is a technical company. Any enterprise has a goal to make money. Developers are the engine making that happen. So yeah. we are going to help enable their developers. And, and I'll tell you, that's probably, you know, you, you're probably looking for use cases. I'm a little more nuts and bolts. They're looking for how do we even do this? Yeah, well, that's what's going to be my question. How do you get developers excited about databases? Well, I think it's, it's in what you do with the database. Right. And it's opening up those new use cases. If, for instance, I want to do fraud detection, and that's an important part of my, my application, um, what gets them excited is something that's easy to use. A database that actually does work, it's performant, it stays online. That I don't have to make excuses to my boss whenever it goes down. That I'm not woke up at three o'clock in the morning. That whenever I want to extend into another country, another domain, and I got to manage all the regulatory stuff like GDPR, that's a fun time, and we can do that. And so developers are going to be very excited about not having to deal with that. Yeah. Well, another, so, I'm sorry, John. Well, so so when you talk about the developing community, um, I mean, how do you, how, how do you, you're VP of developer relations, so yeah. <laughs> how do you maintain those relations? How do you get them engaged? How do you get them involved? Do you have any special or unique initiatives that you do from an outreach perspective that yeah. allows you to build that bridge and develop a little better sense of community? Well, our primary, our, our primary community is the Apache Cassandra community. Right. And it's events like this. You know, we, we had a lot of Apache Cassandra community members come to our booth. But we also do uh, events where we do developer days. We have our Accelerate conference, which is next, or next year in May. Um, we invite, we, don't, we, we have a special relationship with our community. So we, we try to walk that fine line. We're going to have speakers there that are not customers of ours but they use Apache Cassandra, and we're good with that. We want people to use Apache Cassandra first, and we hope that they would want to be our customer eventually, but that may not happen, and we're okay with that. That's, that's part of that outreach. Now, whenever someone builds an application, bottom line, we want you to be successful. And we want you to tell, you know, we, we have a keen interest in the whole chain, all the way up to the C-level, where they feel confident in using a solution that's going to do it like hybrid cloud. Oh, we have a solution, great, let's do that. Now a database is just one part of the whole solution. So you have this data and you put it into a database, but there's generally some other components that live in there. Not everyone just wants to talk directly to the database. I do, but not everyone does. So right. what are you seeing developers using data stacks to build? What are, they, what are the applications that they're building on top of data stacks? What are the, some of the use cases that customers are interacting with these applications? Well, uh, right now mobile is of course really hot and, and that, that's user management, uh, you, taking care of the state of your data itself, like just the simple stuff. If you look at applications on your phone, I bet you if I looked at your phone, about half of those applications have Cassandra running behind them. Yeah. And I am very confident in saying that because that's, that's a real time problem. But we have other use cases as well that are really interesting, like fraud detection I mentioned, uh, messaging, uh, very important part of that. Um, time series data, time series data is, is making the world go round right now. Um, you could see like this morning there was an, an announcement. Yeah. Amazon's like, yeah, we have a whole solution for time series. Um, it, something that we've always embraced. Time series data is very important. So um, IOT, massive part of that. If you have a database that can scale like ours and can run anywhere, think of the use cases. I mean, that's IOT right there. Yeah. Yeah. 
So you've mentioned a bunch of technologies which have kind of been announced over the last couple of years. IoT's been around for a little while. They're, they're yeah. pretty hot. Have you seen anything at the show so far in the last couple of days that's really caught your eye about, oh, that looks like that's where the future is or there's a lot of momentum in that particular area? You know, I, <laughs> I feel like, and it's, I think we talked about this before, I feel like the, the world's kind of turned around and I've been stuck in my own bubble for a long time with Cassandra yeah. because I, I believe in re replicated data and hybrid cloud. It seems like everyone's like, oh, wait, data should be everywhere. Where it four years ago when I said your data should be everywhere, it's like, I'm fine with my relational database on one server. I, I don't need any more things. And, right. Okay, well I'll see you in a few years. <laughs> so uh, I don't want to say I told you so, but Go I'm ahead. gonna sit back and relax, you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna let it happen. I'm very happy to see everyone's at the party now. Welcome. <laughs> well thanks for having us. Yeah, we've absolutely. really we've had a great couple of days, Pat. Yeah, it's right. great. Good, no, but thank you for the time. We yeah, appreciate 50, it. Fifty thousand of my closest friends. And next time bring that crystal ball with you and, and we can look down the road for another three five. I think years I'm out of there. magic. I don't I don't want yeah, to do it. No, 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 we're gonna don't hold ask you me to about it. <laughs> Super Bowl winners. Or anything like that. You're on the hook. Go with the Saints, by the way. All right. Back with more from AWS reInvent. Uh, you're watching theCUBE, and we're live here in Las Vegas.